Even though it's not necessarily my usual style of photography, once the autumn arrived in Seoul, I was quite mesmerized. The yellow leaves everywhere transformed the city and made me want to take long walks with no real destination. And what better companion for this kind of photography trips than the Ricoh GR3. I've never really taken these kind of photos before and I did have some initial trouble getting started. I think the biggest challenge was that I was a little bit too impressed by leaves being yellow, but eventually I found some good light, I found some rain and I started to get some sort of results. So in this photography vlog, I'll share the journey and the process and the photos with you guys. I also throw in some film photos as well, but most of these will be taken with the Ricoh GR3. So I hope you enjoyed that little cinematic intro. It was shot on my A7S III, by the way. So after spending a couple weeks in Busan, I returned to Seoul. And Busan wasn't really having this kind of an autumn season, but Seoul definitely was having autumn in full swing. So immediately after I got back, I just wanted to head out the door and take photos of the yellow leaves because it is a really beautiful time to explore the city. But even then, at the time, I realized that I was probably having a little bit of what I would call tourist brain. Because here's the thing, especially because for me, I've traveled so much, I've realized that often when you're too impressed by something due to being new to that scene, it is very difficult to actually take photos that are good in a more objective sense. So if you're a tourist somewhere, you're gonna overrate all the photos you take initially. But the only way to really get over that is to simply take photos for a couple days. They're probably all gonna suck for the most part, but after a couple of days of this, you'll be able to see your photos a little bit more objectively and you'll be able to take photos that, let's say, even the locals would appreciate. And that is definitely what happened to me. These initial photos really have no real interesting element other than leaves being yellow. But especially for this reason, the Ricoh GR3 is really the perfect camera just for walking around and wandering for hours and just trying to have a good time because again I was suspecting the initial photos were probably not going to be that good and uh, after a couple of weeks of a delay they've been looking at these photos and taking them I can definitely say the initial photos not very good at all so let's jump over to a day two I wasn't going to do the exact same thing as on the previous day I wanted to find some way to make these photos a bit better and one obvious ingredient that I was lacking on the previous day was good light. So I decided to head out a little bit earlier. And even though it wasn't perfect, the sun kept going behind the clouds occasionally. Luckily, there was still some light available and we could take some more traditional type of street photos. And definitely my best shots from the day all had one thing in common. They had interesting light and not only leaves being colorful. I also had my X-Pan film camera in my bag and I took a couple of photos with that as well. I tried to shoot some Superia that I've not tried for a long time, not a film that I usually use, but I figured it was a good time to try something else. And once again, the photos in the good light with a better exposure look better than the ones in boring light with even a slight underexposure. We get a little bit of muddiness in a couple of these. And here I discovered a gas station, but unfortunately the light was too bad even for a meme photo. Shot on film. I couldn't do it. But I definitely think it was a good idea to focus more on the light, as that is a commonality in a lot of these better photos from this day. And on day three of me being back in Seoul, it was actually raining the entire day. And if you know me, you know that is my thing. I like the rainy moods. That is something that I can actually work with, something that I know how to shoot well. I think one of the challenges was me scrambling a little bit because I wanted to shoot everything and I didn't really know what exactly to shoot. I wanted to take photos normally, I wanted to take photos of the leaves, I wanted to take normal rain photos, I wanted to take day photos, I wanted to take night photos, I wanted to take film, I wanted to take digital, I wanted to take video with uh, several different cameras. It was all a little bit overwhelming, but eventually you just gotta stick to one and do that. Or at least, at most, two cameras at once. Although one benefit I had on this time is that I was staying in Dongdaemun, which was a pretty photogenic 
area for my style of photography so I literally just went out for an hour and then went back to the hotel, switched cameras and went back out again. So it didn't end up being that huge of a problem in the end. The X-Pan film photos were kind of meh. I still had the Superia about half a roll left from the previous day but I don't think it's really the right kind of film for these kind of conditions and in a lot of these photos my compositions are just a little bit off and a little bit lazy maybe rushing to finish the roll a little too much not paying enough attention and because it was also the type of rain that is difficult to avoid I didn't want to get my expand too wet so I just gave up after about 10 photos and just went with the digital Rico and the Sony for some higher quality b-roll and I'm literally walking the exact same path as the few previous days but now it feels totally different thanks to the different conditions and I already know the photogenic spots so there's no reason to go further. The 360 footage is with the GoPro by the way I was trying to vlog as well with the camera and, and while the microphone is actually not the worst usually it was too windy to use any of the footage so I'm just narrating everything instead. Time to get a better microphone set up for that kind of vlogging as well at some point. Anyway here's some photos with the Sony. These are all on the 55mm lens, I also got the Ricoh with me at all times. It is the 28mm equivalent, which admittedly is really starting to grow on me. I used to not like the focal length on the Ricoh being too wide, but the more I use it the more I tend to like it, even though it's not ideal for every situation, but it's actually easier to just have it in the pocket and whip it out when you need a wider angle, as opposed to changing a lens. In my last Ricoh video, by the way, somebody commented that this thing is not waterproof. It is not waterproof. Just use an umbrella. It's not like you're giving it a bath. <laughs> you know, it can it can take a couple of drops as long as you're using an umbrella and not making it soaked. Now, what it cannot necessarily take is damage from dropping. I dropped this camera once because it's fine when you're holding it this way, but when you're taking a vertical photo, you have to hold it like this and Flipping it around quickly while shooting, sometimes it just slips out of your fingers and it hit the ground a couple times already. One time the lens extender thing got stuck and I was a little bit nervous, so I punched this camera really hard and it started working. Then the next time I dropped it, same thing happened again and the lens protector flap stopped closing totally. So I definitely think that if I'm ever going to break this camera, it's not going to be due to rain damage. It's going to be due to clumsy fingers. But what you're going to do? It is the only downside, literally the only downside of having such a small camera. It's very easy to drop. Anyways, enough ranting. Let me show you a couple photos that I took with the Rico on this day in the rain. These first two are more my usual style, have zero yellow leaves, hence the darker background as well. The second photo is interesting because the smaller that it looks, the better that it looks if it's too big on the screen and you see too many of the details you don't actually see the lady with the umbrella and it loses all of its impact. My upcoming videos will have more of these kind of photos coming up, so many of them in fact, but because we only have a limited amount of time to shoot the autumn leaves that was the main focus of this day. So let's look at a couple more autumn themed photos. And recently I also been getting into portraits, so I contacted a model and did some portraits as well in these conditions. A little bit maybe even stereotypical autumn portraiture, but I did continue at night and I took some really cool portraits in my opinion. I'm gonna make a full video about that because portraits is definitely something that I'm interested in expanding on more. And here's probably one of the coolest things that I've seen, a film wending machine. This is probably like five minutes away from my hotel. And of course, I shot it on film. Anyway, a couple more photos before I end the video. Hope you enjoyed this video. It's definitely a new type of photography for me. Very educational, very fun time. If you ever get a chance to visit Seoul during the autumn, I definitely recommend it. I've been watching a bunch of these how to succeed on YouTube videos and uh, apparently I should stop telling people to subscribe and instead I should tell people to if you're already subscribed or if you want to subscribe 
click the bell icon if you want to watch my videos. So you'll get notified every single time that I post a new photography vlog or other kind of a photography video on this channel. It's probably going to be mostly vlogs. So thanks for watching. See you next time.